ko vi ake ki na vitel ka wa ka po vi te tuge winge ka po winge hera aku iwariomo good afternoon everybody my name is justine tiba and i am from the pueblos of santa clara tsuki and akama and i am a member of the red nation um, the Red Nation is an indigenous liberation organization in Turtle Island, uh, but more specifically, we are revolutionary socialists and feminists, and it rose from a need to combat uh, border town violence um, in the United States. Uh, the Red Nation has loads of gratitude for the Venezuelan government, we have come here multiple times as international observers and um, as attendees to the International Summit Against Fascism on the 20th anniversary of the failed coup against Chavez. And uh, we have also come as a group to the first international gathering of indigenous peoples. And uh, this is my first time here as an election observer. So uh, Dawa, thank you for this opportunity. It's a grand honor to be here. So I like to talk a little bit about um, where I'm from. The context of where I'm speaking is a little bit different because um, in the US, in the US, we are over 500 tribes, and the indigenous perspective can't be so easily generalized. So I am from uh, three pueblos in New Mexico, and in New Mexico, there are 19 pueblos. New Mexico was colonized uh, three times. We were under the Spanish government, the Mexican government, and now the US government. Uh, New Mexico is the only state in the US or where the nuclear bomb is created and disposed of in, of in every stage. So um, in my sacred mountains, where I'm from, is where they created the world's first nuclear bomb. If New Mexico was to exist as its own nation, it would be the third largest nuclear superpower in the world. And so that radiation poisoning of my people is something that is um, very prevalent. And um, in New Mexico, or in um, the tribes that I'm from, the, we are under extreme patriarchy. When the patriarchs came, they left patriarchs behind them. The Department of the Interior uh, Secretary, Deb Holland, she is from a Pueblo as well. And she, despite having um, one of the highest levels of government as an indigenous woman, she can't serve um, in her own council because she's a woman. I can't vote because I'm a woman. And there are a lot, still Pueblos where women um, are not allowed to hold um, positions of leadership. And uh, I am one of those women. And um, merely speaking up um, for what are just the smallest things that should be, um, we are um, put at risk. In uh, this past September uh, 28th of uh, 2023, uh, the Red Nation was at a protest against um, the reinstallment of a statue of colonizer Juan de Oñate. And these kind of monuments are especially important to the settler state because the settler state exists on ideology alone. And so when that ideology is challenged, it, is actu it actually translates as something very violent and dangerous, even though what we're asking and demanding is, is basic dignity for indigenous people. Um, at that protest um, was a failed mass shooting by Trump supporter Ryan Martinez and he shot what a relative protector named Jacob Johns in an in, an, in what we uh, are calling a attempted political assassination attempt on members of our organization and also a failed mass shooting. Um, after he shot Jacob, he pointed the gun at another woman and the gun failed to 
um, go off. So he took off um, in his Tesla and he is currently in jail. But that sacrifice by Jacob Johns is something that I will always remember as an organizer and an activist. And the reason I'm telling you all of this is because the political vehicles that are available to me as an indigenous, indigenous woman hardly exist. And even um, for indigenous peoples, uh, indigenous tribes in the United States are almost mostly fully indoctrinated into the settler state. It is so refreshing and just life affirming to come to a place where these kind of ideas are, are, are being talked about in very real and material ways. Because the way that we in the Red Nation talk about them, um, they're just dreams. When I was reading through uh, the World Social um, Alternative uh, document, I was just so delighted to read it because um, it opens up with the imperialism piece by the Tricontinental, which is part of the, the study groups that we are having right now in the Red Nation. So, um, I was, I, it just, uh, what, a, what a great coincidence that was. And when I was reading through the document, I saw that it was eerily similar to our book, The Red Deal, Indigenous Action to Save Our, Our Earth. It is a book that was published in 2019, and that is the political ideology of the Red Nation. The Red Deal is divided into three parts, um, end the occupation, heal our bodies, and heal our planets. Part one is end the occupation. We want an end to border imperialism. We want an end to US imperialism and militarism. We want to end the prison industrial complex in the US, um, but we recognize that the U.S. and its military is the largest polluter on the planet. And it is very much a, um, on top of the U.S. suffocating the world with its policy, it literally creates the most carbon emissions out of any carbon emission creator in the world. The U.S. spends tons of money, it spends the majority of its budget on the, um, on its military, and that's because the U.S. doesn't have anything else. The U.S. exists by force and force alone. It is it exists purely by settler ideology, and we recognize this. Part two and three are kill our bodies and kill our planet. We believe that you can di we can divest from U.S. occupation and reinvest in our common humanity. We can get, we can use the money that is used um, for the military instead for education, for healthcare, for housing, for clean water, for uh, for for to feed everybody, to um, hold the U.S. accountable for its climate reparations that it owes us, that it owes me as a Tewa person who comes from, um, comes from the mountains where the Los Alamos nuclear bomb was created, where they filled our kivas with nuclear waste and our ancestral sites are completely contaminated. They owe me and my people the environmental reparations to clean up the mess that it made. We also, um, in the Red Deal, we also talk about land back. We know that the U.S. is built on stolen land by stolen people. We know, we know, we know who the original peoples are of the U.S. because we're still here. 
we are the political alternative that exists in the U.S. And I feel like our people don't even realize that because we are so indoctrinated into the settler state. I come from nations who offer their sympathies to Trump for getting shot at, to Biden for catching COVID. And it has been like this for a long time. When the American Indian movement took over the BIA building in Washington, DC, they were condemned by tribal leaders instead of applauded. When the Red Nation abolished the, the genocide parade known as the Entrada, they were condemned by tribal leaders then. However, because of the mass movements globally and especially Black Lives Matter, this time around when Jacob Johns was shot at a protest, they, this time they instead condemned the shooter. So that tells me that because of the, of the people movements around the world, our people and my people can be changed. And that's why I believe in uh, the organization, the Red Nation, because um, that's the political vehicle um, that we have for these ideas. As an indigenous person in the United States, I understand that my existence alone is a contradiction to the existence of the settler state. I am not indigenous because of um, my culture or my language. I am indigenous because it is a political position in the constructs of settler colonialism. If settler colonialism never existed, I would just be Tewatoa or Kahayahanu or Akume. I would be from where my people are from. I would be from my nations. And that is what we want too. We, as indigenous nations, out of, out of a few of the over 500s that exist, I want nationhood for our indigenous people. And through that nationhood, I want us to get our land back. I want us to get our water back. I want us to get our relatives back. We are internationalists, and even before October, we had our deepest and utmost solidarity with um, indigenous peoples across the world, um, including Palestine. Various members of the Red Nation have gone to Palestine, and they've seen the settler state of Israel and the way that it suffocates the Pal Palestinian people. And that is how we see ourselves and how we see, that is how we see ourselves um, in Palestine and in Palestinians. We know the entire history and future of Palestine because we have lived it. And we know that a Palestinian future is a certain future because we are still here. And never forget that the Al-Aqsa flood began because they were trying to free their political prisoners. They were trying to get their relatives back. They were trying to free their relatives from the Israeli settler state. And that is something that we are very much fighting for too in the US. Um, just a couple weeks ago, our elder and relative, Leonard Peltier, who was the longest serving political prisoner um, or longest held political prisoner in the US, was denied parole for a crime that he did not commit. And we know why they keep him in jail. We know why they keep him imprisoned. And it's because he is a threat, his existence as an indigenous defender is a threat to the settler state, again, because it only exists by ideology. And so um, when we say free Palestine, we mean free Palestine, we mean free, um, free us and free Leonard Peltier. So as far as reparations go, what we say in the Red Deal is 
it is not just an Indian problem when we say that we are, uh, when we talk about the climate crisis that we are facing, because we, um, these are issues for the entire world. Indigenous people getting sovereignty and nationhood and land back are very much reparations for the entire world. When you put leadership into the hands of indigenous people, we don't only want good for us. We don't only want a clean water, clean environment, housing, resources for ourselves. We want it for the entire world. What, uh, what we demand is an end to imperialism, not just for us, but for the entire world. And I see that very much laid out in, um, in the document here. And so I just, I just want to um, express my deepest gratitude for being here and witnessing this. And it is just a huge affirmation to me and other um, comrades in the Red Nation that these aren't just dreams. These aren't just ideas. These are very material demands that are, are to be accomplished. And I just wish for a future where we are not under the boot of US imperialism globally. Thank you all for um, materializing my dreams. Thank you.